world news. Today we will be discussing the major themes of world history. Environment, politics, society, culture, and economy. First, Allie with the weather, aka the environment. Thanks Joanna. We begin in Africa where migrations out to most continents begin. First, migrations to the Middle East and the warmer parts of Asia, and then to Europe and Northern Asia 60,000 years later. It is also believed that some crossed the Bering Land Bridge to the Americas. However, the Americas remained isolated from Afro Eurasia until the 1400s. Next, we see the voyages of the Polynesians around 1900 BCE, and foods and diseases begin to spread wider and faster than before. In the period 600 to 1450, we see the major outbreak of the Black Death and the beginning of the Little Ice Age. Remember when we said the Americas were isolated from Afro Eurasia? Not anymore, thanks to Christopher Columbus resulting in the Columbia Exchange. Crops, animals, diseases, which kill half of native populations due to no built resistance, everything is being exchanged, finally creating global interaction. Next comes the Industrial Revolution. This is where the environment really gets <laughs> Not like it wasn't before, but yeah. Pollution and resources extracted from this area arise, and we also see huge earth shaping projects such as the Suez Canal and Panama Canal. Coming lastly to the present, we see environmental disasters such as Hurricane Katrina and global warming. So we can definitely see that over time the environment affects humans and humans affect it in return, in a cause-effect relationship. Now, how about when we move on to sports, so the political portion. In the Bronze Age, we see the rise of the first teams and core civilizations out of the Middle East, Mesopotamia and Egypt, the Indus River Valley, Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, China, the Shang. Mesoamerica, Olmecs, and the Andes, the Shavi. Most of these teams were built by conquest, and team rules, or laws, became more formalized. Most of these teams expanded due to overreach, politically, economically, territorially, or environmentally. In the next period, not only do we see different teams, but we also see different types of management, such as feudalism and the mandate of heaven. Religious beliefs also conflict with team management. For example, the Papal Imperial Struggle, where the Holy Roman Empire could not decide whether the Pope or the Emperor held true power. The Crusades of Europe against the Middle East to regain power from Islamic rule also fit here. The one and only Mongols are also in this period who, under the management of Genghis Khan, conquered most of Asia. After Genghis Khan dies, management of the Mongol Empire is then split up into smaller teams called Khanates, managed by Genghis Khan's grandsons. We move forward to the next period where we see a major change in political style. Although much of Europe agreed with the absolutist government of France, Great Britain shifted towards a representative parliamentary. The gunpowder league also rises, which included the Ottoman, Safavid, and Mughal teams. European maritime exploration and empires fueled colonization and imperial activity. In 1750 to 1900, we see new teams forming out of main ones, including Haiti from the French and America from the British. In the last period, we see arguably the biggest series between teams in both the World Wars and in the Cold War. In World War I, the Allies, America, Britain, France, Italy, and Russia, went up against the Central Powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria, after the Archduke of Austria-Hungary is assassinated. And in World War II, the Allies, Britain, Soviet Union, America, and France faced the Axis Powers, Germany, Italy, and Japan. Both series resulted in a win for the Allies, but both sides suffered large losses of population, economic hardship, and environmental changes. The Cold War consisted of capitalist U.S. versus communist Soviet Union. Here we also see the North-South split, which is the differentiation between developed and underdeveloped societies, and the collapse of the Soviet Union. So we can see politically the different types of government and relationships between different nation states or teams. Now, on to the traffic or society. The major backups in the social traffic of AP world are superiority and classes. From the very beginning, we see society favoring men over women, whites over blacks, the wealthy over the peasants, and the different ranks of classes. With the agricultural revolution came patriarchy, as the man's physical build proved better for the demands of agriculture. However, matriarchy was existent, especially in the societies of Africa. We also see class structures limit movement, such as the caste system in India, placing the Brahmin or priest class at the top, with the class of untouchables at the bottom, the Ailu communities of the Andes, 
where the community worked together to provide labor and goods to a hereditary chief and samurai nobility and the daimyo of Japan. Traffic in society is also caused by coerced labor. Major forms of coerced labor include slavery, serfdom, and the encomienda and mita systems. To touch back on another major social setback, the growing equality of women can also be observed. The traditional role of women was to take care of the children and the household while the man worked. However, with gaining working abilities during the Industrial Revolution, helping during the World Wars as nurses, and the ability of the vote, the social status of women is rising, clearing up some traffic on that road. There are many things that can restrain or advance a person in society, which include religion, gender, race, and wealth. Now, we have moved on to the cultural news, where we have a special guest with us today. The first sightings in culture can be seen through different early types of record keeping, such as cuneiform, hieroglyphics, and pictograms, and later on, the alphabet we use today begins in Phoenicia. Major religions such as Christianity, Islam, and Buddhism begin in 600 and 900 BC including conflicts such as the Great Schism between Roman Catholicism and Ethan Orthodoxy in Europe and the Shia-Sunni split in Islam. In 1200 to 1450, we see great cultural developments such as the Renaissance in Europe and the travels of famous explorers including Ivan Baduda's travels in Africa and Asia, Marco Polo's travels along the Silk Road, and most importantly, Zhenghi's travels. Here today to speak about his travels is Zhenghi. Welcome to AP World News. Tell us when, where, and why did you travel? Well, my travels in the Pacific and Indian Oceans lasted from 1405 to 1433, and my intentions of travel were to gain tribute to China from areas such as Southeast Asia, India, and Africa. Um, I see you have something in your hand there. Well, what is, what's that? Oh, well, I brought a picture of myself signed to my number one fan. Oh, I... That, that doesn't really look like you. Oh, um, that's just because it was taken a couple years ago. You know, a lot's changed. A lot's of course. Changed. Yeah, do you think I can get it to him? I would greatly appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Totally. Right. Thank totally. you. All right, well, thank you for your time, Jaini. Thank you. You too. Culturally, there are changes in thought and ideology that also intertwine with elements of social and political insights. Lastly, we move on to stocks, or economy. People began as hunter-foragers, limiting trade to barter. As the first civilizations rose, so did the start of early trade systems, such as Mesopotamian Indus, Mesopotamian Egyptian, and Nubian Egyptian trades. In 600 and 900 BCE, trade has expanded even more, with systems such as the Mediterranean, Silk Road, Caravan Routes, and Indian Ocean, which will gain even more importance in a later period. The Industrial Revolution brought about many economic changes. Increasing trade and economy were technologies such as railroads, telegraphs, and steamships. The Great Depression during the 1930s, originating from the United States, affected economies globally. Nations called for economic reforms, such as the New Deal in the U.S., Mao's Great Leap Forward in China, and the Marshall Plan to help Europe. Recent economic events include the replacement of the General Agreement with the World Trade Organization and the economic crisis of 2007. So economically, there are changes in economic systems, trade routes, and... We gotta get out of here! Why? What's wrong? Shmaggy, he's wearing his bear socks! Oh no. Run for your grave! You have to get out of here! Oh no! Oh no!